Since 1983, fame has helped business and education work for Maine. Contact the authority, the finance authority of Maine. You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. On January 1st, Robert Clark took the reins of Huston University from Bill Beardsley, who led the school for 23 years. Clark is a UMaine graduate and returns to Maine by way of Indiana's University of Evansville, where he was the Vice President for Strategic Initiatives and leader of its business education program. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having uh, me. First of all, uh, give us uh, kind of a real quick snapshot of Huston University for our viewers. Tell us who, how many students you have, where you're located, all of that. Huston University is uh, main campus is in Bangor, Maine. We have approximately 3,500 students between our New England School of Communications and the university uh, programs at Huston. Uh, we also have satellite campuses in Portland, South Portland, mm -hmm. and in Presque Isle, where we have students in residence. We have an operation in Callis, Unopsky College there, and we have a boat school in Eastport. Uh, so a total undergraduate and graduate population of about 3,500 students. That's amazing. And I, and I didn't realize until I started looking at it how widespread, how the tentacles of Husson have started to kind of move out. Uh, you are a, a Maine native. You were born in Albion, Maine, is that correct? I was born in Waterville, technically. But okay. I lived in Albion. Everybody does that to me when I ask them. No, there's no hospital in Albion. Right. Um, and uh, you're a UMaine graduate with an MBA. Uh, how does it feel to return to Maine? Uh, what, and what attracted you to come back to Husson? To it was an opportunity yeah. at this point in my career to make a difference in my home state. My family, all of my extended family, uh, has remained in Maine even as we've, uh, my wife and I and our two daughters had moved away from Maine about 25 years ago. So we've uh, been back, we've been connected to the state, mm -hmm. and uh, the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of students uh, attracted me to Great. Hudson. We like to talk, and even with the universities, about uh, approach it from a business point of view, and mm -hmm. you're the new CEO there, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, what's it like to follow Bill Beardsley? I mean, big shoes to fill. He's uh, larger than life at Huston. He really, in that 23 years, really did, was transformational, li literally from a college to a university. Uh, and, and I think as we continue the progression of the college's transition to the university, uh, that's the role I fill in, in terms of how do we continue to work towards academic excellence and center on student success. Uh, how, do you, how do you see your leadership uh, differing from President Beardsley's? Well, you know, and honestly, when you come into an institution and you bring your own perspectives, yeah. your own experiences, uh, my background, I'm a chartered financial analyst. My doctorate from Purdue is in finance. Uh, I'm an emerging uh, market specialist, if you will, in, in infrastructure and economic development. Mm. Uh, I'm a program uh, individual that can build and develop programs. And so I take that as my skill set, uh, how we can continue to make sure Hassan meets the needs of the students just as Bill Beardsley did. Yep. So it's not kind of like I say, oh, his style was X and mine is Y. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So you're taking that, as from a business point of view, taking that brand, that product too, and mm -hmm. moving it to the next level using your skills. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to one of the key, I think, uh, um, trademarks of, uh, of Hassan is that it's real entrepreneurial spirit. The mm -hmm. way it kind of is uh, mm -hmm. a risk taker, it's uh, entrepreneurial, it's nimble, it's competitive, it's first to market, all those mm -hmm. kinds of things that we want our businesses to be. Will you be continuing that spirit in with your background? Tell me more about what you think of that for Hudson. Yes, certainly as we look and make sure that our programs actually match to meet the needs of the workforce development, mm. uh, that'll be part of our essence of developing programs. Uh, my style is to evaluate and assess and, and do some prospecting, if you will. Uh, an example of a program that was approved by our trustees this past weekend is uh, in CTE, Continuing Technology Education and Vocational Education. Uh, there was a void in the state of Maine of how do we prepare educators for vocational technical training. And so we assessed a need as an institution. We worked to develop an opportunity for the university, and uh, the trustees approved a new program. Well, one of the things I've observed uh, is, uh, in terms of the, being an entrepreneurial, is that the nimbleness, the ability mm -hmm. to quickly make a decision like that, mm -hmm. see the market, see the need, and then move on it. Mm -hmm. uh, some schools aren't able to do that, and we'll talk more about that later, mm -hmm. about that advantage. Uh, who do you see as your competitors? Well, as we look, uh, I like to think that we have a landscape, uh, you know, when we try to define competitors in the same sense uh, of a business, uh, you know, we're in the higher education landscape. We are one of the lowest cost private higher education institutions mm -hmm. in New England. And so from a cost benefit 
basis. Uh, certainly, uh, our targeting of professional education as our goal uh, sets us a, a apart from some others. Um, but we certainly have opportunities to uh, be in that landscape. Okay. Um, uh, you see, I, I resisted you the did. temptation you to did. say uh, UMaine or whatever or uh, from my alma mater or, 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 or the University of New England, which is, which is a school know. that's very much parallels kind of yeah. how in the same kind of a spirit you guys have. And we love to watch them both kind of jockey for position. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good thing for Maine, I think. How is running it? We talked about the business of running a university, but how is running a university? You and you've been in the private sector as well. How is running a university like running a private business, but also how is it different? Well, I think that uh, what we know is that a lot of times individuals will say, you know, uh, universities need to get into the real world. They need to right. uh, perspectively well, look at it. And what I can tell you is that, you know, every two weeks we meet a payroll of yeah. more than a half a million dollars. Yeah. And if that's not real world and real business, I don't really know what it is. Yeah. How, uh, many, you know? how many employees total? So we have a little over 300 employees uh, in our workforce, and we have a number of part-time employees as well. Uh, the recession uh, that we're all out of, by Way. Have you heard lately? Oh, they, every time they turn around, <laughs> uh, they right. kind of tell me well, that. Things are supposedly getting better, but during the recession, how did that affect the university? What we found is that, you know, sometimes higher education is a bit counter cyclical because individuals that might not have okay. been able to enter the workforce with the skill set they have. What we know, Maine's economy needs trained workforce. Mm. And individuals that weren't able to enter into the economy due to their skill set return to higher education. Our growth rates for the last five years have been double digit. Okay. Um, okay. So I see how that works. Uh, you also, from your background, have a focus on international education. Mm -hmm. uh, you were a Fulbright Scholar at the Norwegian School of Management. You were a guest faculty member at the Business and Economics University in Vienna. Uh, and at University of Evanston, Evansville, rather, you were awarded a five-year uh, grant uh, to establish the Institute for Global Enterprise in Indiana. Mm -hmm. will, that be, will you be bringing that to Maine, too? And how does that impact what you're doing? In, it's not will I be bringing it. I already have. Good. Uh, you know, it's a, a case of creating an opportunity for a mindset. And it's how we in business recognize the global dimensions of the economies that we work in. Mm -hmm. Maine's economy is such that we have uh, this past year in 2009, 2.3 billion dollars worth of exports. Each billion dollars is generally rule of thumb about 20,000 jobs in the economy. Uh, that's a powerful workforce environment and we need to be aware and equipping our students to step into that new economy. And so bringing an increased awareness of globalization is a mindset. I, I try to tell people it's not just studying abroad and et cetera. It's how do you shape their thinking yeah. about the world in a broader context. Great, great. We're going to talk more about that. We're going to take a break right now, come back in our second segment and carry on with that discussion and others. Thank you. Know, great. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Hudson University President Robert Clark. Main Biz Sunday is brought to you by Bangor Savings Bank, where you can enjoy free ATMs worldwide. <laughs> 